Welcome back, everyone. So uh, now that we have uh, finished all presentation uh, from our international experts, you have seen a lot of perspective from a lot of different uh, discipline, disciplines. Uh, you have understood how it's not only engineering uh, measures, but how people can be a great part of flood risk management, increasing resilience. Now it's your turn to give us back what you have received in the last two days. And we'll start with the presentations that you have. Uh, I see you are quite uh, good at that. You have already uploaded your presentations here. So yes, uh, I would like to call upon uh, the stage. Um, the first group, group one, who has uh, prepared a presentation on perspectives on hydrology, feedbacks between physical and social processes, and proposes of ABC region, okay, good name, of Sao Paulo State. Right, please, group one, come up on the stage. Hello there, <laughs> how are you doing? <laughs> so, my name is Eduardo, and the group are composed by Renan, João Pedro, uh, Maria Cecilia, Liz, Francisco, and Rafael. So we're going to talk about the problem in ABC region. I think it's very uh, regular for everyone to know there's a lot of problems there about the flood and a lot of rain and the impermeabilization of the basin right there. And uh, just for the, for the teacher here, for the other country, is the region next is capital of Sao Paulo. It's a metropolitan area. <laughs> so <laughs> moving. So, <laughs> so we're going to begin the presentation. Uh, oh. I'm going to put your Renan to work a little bit. <laughs> so. Let's start with the justification of the work. Uh, there is a lot of uh, climatology events, extreme events, uh, growing uh, more and more for the years. So more events, and there is a lot of preoccupation of, about that because we will, you will cause a lot of damage, like we will talk about next. <laughs> so, with that problem of extreme climate events, there is the population rising up more and more, and with a greater urbanization uh, rate. And um, we can, you know, plus that the global warming will cause more extreme events, and we we know about that. We discussed that a lot here in the workshop. And the place we're going to study is the area of the ABC. It's composed by the municipalities of Santo André, São Bernardo do Campo, São Caetano do Sul, Diadema, Mauá, Ribeirão Pires, and Rio Grande da Serra. There is the codes of these municipalities because we use that further. And there is a population of two million half, more or less, <laughs> there. And the main uh, stream there is the uh, Tamando Atei River. And the length of the river is 35 kilometers. <laughs> and uh, it's uh, the, this river going to Tietê River. So it's an influence of the river, Tietê. And it's located in uh, UGR 6 the Alto Tietê. It's the location in the, uh, in the, yes, there, <laughs> and the location in the state of uh, in the in the map of the uh, basins of Brazil. Uh, about the characterization, there is a map showing all the municipalities in the in the basin so you can see there is more some municipalities they're more uh, exposed to the to the river and uh, are more influenced by that and here there is the climatology oh value thank you <laughs> uh, so and uh, 
there is the climatology of the region. So you have uh, data from 30 years uh, there in climatology use data from that uh, that range to to study understand the the behavior and we can see a lot of rains in January so uh, this is the uh, separate for each municipality the rains so it's a lot of rain so, so because of that there is a lot of problems and some popular uh, some char social economic characterization so we can see some municipalities there is more people demographic density and some some of them are more there have more um, money you can say more resource than others and there is a uh, because of that, there is a lot of uh, poor population here in, in some municipalities, the same with uh, less money. And, uh, and here is the sanitary yes, structure in each municipality. Uh, some interesting thing is uh, all the area is uh, are in protecting areas, so it's a lot of risk to something to flood and other other uh, problems related with uh, a lot of rain and the, the all the the flood plain is occupied by urbanization, so this inflicts a lot of problems for the population there and. Uh, and there is, uh, um, in the center of all this, there is a lot of poor people living in, 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 this, re in, the, in this area. So it's more concern about that. And here we have uh, some data about uh, the landslides and flood. So there is a, a lot of events. And uh, Santa Andrea, the main, and you can see that, and uh, São Bernardo do Campo, São Bernardo do Campo, São Bernardo do Campo, are the main, are the main place inflicted by the flood and the landslide. Uh, this is a map of uh, vulnerability in the state of São Paulo. And we can see there, there is ABC Paulista, and it's uh, very high, the, the risk, extremely high. <laughs> uh, and we found uh, this index they use to classify all the region, and use socioeconomic data, demographic and urban, sanitary, extreme climate events, and uh, use that to calculate an index to understand uh, what, uh, what the impact in, in that places. And there is some weights used to improve the, the yeah, but, uh, <laughs> and like here we can see the place with uh, more vulnerability. So Ribeirão Pires is the municipality with more vulnerability because, uh, however, uh, however, uh, San Bernardo in São Caetano there is a um, a lot of events of uh, slide, uh, ground slide and uh, flood. The the social the vulnerability there is better than in these other municipalities because the situation of sanitary, of urban, uh, urbanization, and the socioeconomic parameters. Uh, how can we percept? Uh, uh, there is a lot of news talking about this nowadays. Uh, there is a lot of that. Ribeirão Pires have four deaths, the place we talk about. Uh, São Caetano, three deaths, Santander, to uh, and others here of the region. So there is a lot of, uh, it's a big issue, a big problem happening there. 
and how okay, what can we do to um, improve the situation there and uh, uh, resolution the problems. Um, there is some conventional uh, techniques we could use. Uh, alert system. There is alert system there. So, but how can we see in the news? Are not working very well because if he, if it is working, the people will not die. <laughs> and uh, there is alternatives like the low impact development, and uh, it's a structural alternative, and no structural alternatives, like uh, risk awareness and increased resilience. Uh, talking about low impact development strategies, uh, they are the main of this is trying to improve the infiltration of the water in the soil, and uh, um, you know, keep it low the runoff so and uh, the the idea is to come back or trying to come back the area to some uh to the original state of the area because uh before the people come there was forest there were there were, uh, there was a a natural stream so when we come to a bit the place we change all this dynamic of water and that's implic uh, implicit a lot of problems, so we can percept in the all the things we show. Um, and uh, the great idea is try to use some of these natural techniques to uh, to improve the the, uh, the 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 infiltration and others. Uh, you know. Let, uh, <laughs> yes, and, 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 be, uh, and promote the treatment of the water because we will help it, uh, the soil and the plant will degrade some composites and we will help in, in keeping the balance in the, in the region. So this is a conventional and this is what we want in the, in the LID, um, we talk the conventional hard engineering and soft engineering in low impact. So, um, talking about the treatment, met metabolic pollutants, and resolve the problem in, in sight and not extra. So, when we use hard engineering, we have to uh, take this water and take to another place to resolve the problem. So channels, you know, all the structure to canalize that the water. And when we use the soft, we treat right there. Well, uh, how can I, we see that? It's an example in Houston. And there's gardens where the runoff come to the garden and the water infiltrate. And you can use that water um, after the water is, uh, is stored. Here are some examples. And this is a, a habitational place where uh, all the water of the roof go to, to the garden and infiltrate, and uh, the people can use that water future. This is a, a, public, a public library. So it's the same idea. Storage the water, treat the water in the ground, and it, Re, uh, reuse that water. So it's very good because we come back the fu hydrologic functions and that help uh, in uh, 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 about the, the nature you can restore the biodiversity of the region, for example. Uh, some engaged strategies, environmental education, it's very useful because if you, uh, in Brazil you can relate uh, a lot of fluid problem with uh, waste because there is a lot of waste going to the uh, the place where water is supposed to go, but uh, interrupt the 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 flow. Uh, public awareness, it's very helpful, and 
about public perception, we can we can see there is a low perception of population about uh, the risk involving uh, global warming and and uh, the flood problem, because with the global warming we will increase the extreme events and we how we see in the presentations uh, with the there is a hazard and there is a expose and a vulnerability and i like to think the hazard is like a shark the vulnera uh, the expose is the water if i'm not in the water i'm not exposed to the shark so, mm -hmm. so the shark will not eat me with the big jaw <laughs> And the uh, vulnerability is my condition. If I'm bleeding, it's more the chance the shark attack me because the bleed will attract the shark. Sometimes the shark will do nothing with me because, you know, the shark have your uh, own life, uh, eat some fish, so he's not concerned about humans. But if you're bleeding and you uh, uh, you're splashing water like a seal, so problem the check will attract will be attracted and go to you so when we think about the risk we can think about that if i'm in the sea in the sea with a lot of checks but in a boat so i have a, a not vulnerable to the check nothing will help will happen to me so we can use that com that comparison to understand if i'm in the place where the flood can can occur uh, happen and uh, there is some protection involving me, for example, uh, LID systems, and there is infiltration, and there is some uh, extru uh, a, a lot of uh, things that have help me to escape for that situation, the risk is low. But it, if, it, if it don't happen, it will be a higher risk. So some resilience strategies. So, as I say, increase restoring ground, cover of plants. Uh, the roads, it's important. If you have a road that's unneeded, you don't, uh, it's a preferential uh, way for the stream. So, will help. Uh, improving drainage, uh, rebuilding streams, restoring uh, vegetation. And there is a lot of actions that will help. Uh, and the big deal is understand that we are part of the hydrology cycle and uh, uh, we cannot escape of that. The river uh, is, uh, okay, is underwater canalized, but there is a river there, so the stream go to there somewhere, uh, sometime. So we have to think about that and we have to uh, understand that Everything is connected in is that. <laughs> Thank you. Yes. <laughs> okay. What is security? So uh, my question is, during the drought in 2014-15, we have uh, uh, an anomaly in precipitation in the summer uh, uh, <coughs> season. But we have water. This is great water being produced by the urbanization in the mega city. My question is related to this technology in low impact development or something like that. Why? Or in your opinion, in your opinion, why we cannot reuse all this water, great water, in our rivers during this um, low flow uh, season or low flow anomaly? Because we have the technology. So, for your opinion, it's a very good case study, very uh, 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 fit to, to, to the workshop, but why we are not using the technology we have in Brazil or in the world to fix this problem. Thank you. <laughs> um, yeah, it's a good question. We have the technology and we have to use this water. So there is Tietê River in the middle of Sao Paulo. So there's a lot of water all, all the time, all seasons. So it, it's dirt because there is a lot of organic matter, 
microorganisms. But uh, yeah, this is a good question, and I think it's because um, people in the past no, don't think about that because there is a lot of water in the past. There is no problem of drought in the past, so big like that. Um, but um, so we use the uh, the water resource in badly. So when we face the problem, we have the river, but we are not prepared for that. So I think um, um, to this point, to the future, we have to start to think about what we have now and uh, use and prepare that for the next uh, for the next ev uh, next event, next draw. And uh, I don't know, uh, there is some difficulties because there is uh, uh, pol uh, politicians, there is the san uh, sanitation qu uh, issue in Brazil. It's so hard to uh, make a good uh, um, influence uh, station uh, uh, wastewater treatment. And because it's uh, a lot of money to construct a good one, and uh, we s we don't saw the sanitation the san sanitation we we just feel that <laughs> we were impacting the health in the future, but people don't see that all day. So people see hospitals, see roads, but when we think about sanitation, we don't see that happening. So the politicians want to put the money on uh, where people can see that. So to get more votes, to, to receive attention. So they don't want necessarily want the, 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 uh, the, uh, the good of society. They want to show off for, for get more votes. So sanitations. Uh, Sanitation is like that. You, you don't see sanitation right now. You see in the future when you have the problem of sanitation. But uh, uh, I think that, that's the, the reason that we, do, we, don't, we, we can't use this water now. Instead, we have the technology to use. Any more questions? OK. So thank you very much, Group One. That was an, a very good presentation. <laughs> OK, uh, I would like to call upon the stage Group Two yeah, for your presentation. Thank you. Good afternoon. Hi, we are Group Two. We are composed by me, Ana Carolina, Lizette, Ailton, Marina, Melina, and Talita. Right? Pode mudar. So our study base is the Gregorian Creek Basin. It's here in São Carlos. Many of you must know. And this is the map of the location. And the main hazard in this basin is flood. Flood. So the Gregorio Basin has an area of 18.9 kilometers per square, and the population density, density is 148 population per kilometer. And here it's a map of the fillable area. So in the market of the city, it's more vulnerable area. That it's here, right, Carol? And <laughs> right. Um, the this is a, is a map of the floodable area of the Gregory Creek Basin, and this is the altitude, the the elevation map, and this area, as we can see in the next map is the mu uh, municipal market. This, this white circle represents the, the municipal market area. This area um, was the first urban settlement that, 
the first urban settlements of the town of San Carlos showed up in this area. And then uh, the urbanization was expanded until the uh, Washington Louis uh, Highway. So the, the population is expanding from here, for, for here. The urbanization is expanding, and, but it's limited by the, the highway. So the population is concentrated in this area, and it, that is the area that flooded the most in, the, in, the, in this basin. Uh, here we have a graph that represents the, the annual maximum water, level, water levels. The first, uh, water, the first flood was recorded in 1932. And uh, we can notice that the most intense flood is, is occurring right now. And the, the frequency of more intense floods have intensified over the years. And it happens uh, right now the the first um, the first mac, um, hard solutions. I, I don't know how to say that, but the hard structural solutions were made in the 70s and 80s between the 70s and 80s. And the th these type of measures have intensified the 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 flows in this basin. And here is a representation of the analyzed events in the basin. And uh, me and uh, other persons of the lab have analyzed uh, a total of uh, 40, 44 events in, the, in this basin. And 32 represents the return period of 1.9 years. Uh, more or less every two years happens a flood in, in this basin. And we have uh, a return period of 10 years for a flood of uh, half a meter and a period of 18 years for a flood of uh, almost one meter. And it, it, it's quite frequent. Uh, floods in this region and it's frequent flood of high intensity. Uh, good afternoon. Here we have a picture just to, to know more about the area. Uh, this uh, we can saw Americans there along the, the, the creek. And so you can imagine what happened with them when we have flood. So, uh, but it's, it's uh, important to say that they are there because the mayor put them there. They were, because the mayor wanted to use the area that they were occupying, so the mayor put them there. So as you can see, it's more than, than a social problem, only society. So the, 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 the politics, the government is not aware about the, this, the, this hazard. Uh, here is a, 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 a good picture too, because we have this statue here. It's important for people from San Carlos. I don't know this statue yet. Uh, and and the right side we have a flood, and so you can see uh, what, how the the, the things, uh, uh, how bad are things there, and it's funny to say that uh, people they are they resist against changes, struct, structural changes, because uh, this statue is important to them, so they don't want the. Uh, Yes, yeah, it's a historical statue, so they, they resist against changes and on this area. Uh, now we have some mitigating measures that, that we, we could use to, to help. Uh, we talked about uh, LID practice and sponge cities, like Professor Chen Professor showed us yesterday. 
So uh, Spawn City is a measure to improve the permeability, the soil permeability. So that way you can decrease the flow, the flow rate. And we have here some examples of, of uh, uh, how, how to, to put sponge cities, like green roof, rain garden, retention tank, uh, porous pavement, water, water ha harvesting, and many other ways to, to prevent that flood to happen. So if, if the water, you, you can improve the permeability. So you, 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 Yes, if you allow the infiltration, you, you can prevent some floods. Here we have an example to show you. This is, uh, let me check how to pronounce. Uh, Changchang is a river uh, on South Korea. Okay, I put on Google and I heard the woman say the word to try to pronounce. And this is a, a case that, that we brought to show you. Here on the left, you have the, the, the past, and now on the right, you have the present. 2015 now, uh, the, 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 this picture on the right. So you can see a huge difference on the occupation. And, and you can go to the next one. So uh, we have here some, some good things they, they achieved with the, this, this river the river restoration. So provides flood protection for up to a 200 year flood event. So was a, a very nice way to, to protect, to, to prevent. Increase the overall biodiversity by 639%. Reduce the, the urban heat island effect. Reduce the small particles air pollution because people uh, start to, to use more bus and subway, and uh, increase the price of land by 30 to 50 percent, increase the numbers of business by 30.5 percent. Uh, and as you can see, uh, the, the cost to restoration was 350 million, but they, they received a, a payback to 1.98 billion. So this is a very nice investment. So uh, uh, this is what politicians need to think. They only think about, like the other group said, uh, about what people will see. So if I, if I do something that, uh, people will not pay attention so I don't get a vote. But this is important, we can, we can learn with most of people from Orient, because they are a little bit more involved, involved than us. And this is a very good case for us to check and, and use as an example, a good example. Okay. No, no, not yet. <laughs> so to conclude, we suggest some implementation of an alert system. Uh, Pedro says that they have an alert system, but it's very inefficient. So we suggest an efficient one. And it's necessary to carry out a feasibility study of mitigation practice, like the practices we say as example. And the community involvement. So we need to reallocation. We need to, real, we need to reallocate the community and the commerce. Mm. So they need to stay out of the creek, out of near the creek. Yes. And we need to do a chain of revitalization. And after that, rethink the land use and occupation. And, okay. and I think that's all. Yeah, any questions? Yes. So you 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 said that uh, the mayor of the city he asked people to stay in the downtown. No. It was not clear to me. 
no people to stay in downtown. The commerces, the I don't know how to say, but the the fair, the business that was in in the front of the central market was removed from there mm -hmm. to the side of the creek. Only these people were removed, and the mayor uh, asked to stay there. Right. So they don't have the opportunity to go to other places because. No, because it's the regular, regular, regularized place for them. Yeah. Is the the place that they can uh, put the the stands that yeah. they oh, have. Okay. They are allowed to stay in there. Okay. Yes. Interesting. <laughs> okay. Thank you. An another question. Uh, uh, we we spoke yesterday that Brazil have more than forty thousand regions like this one. Uh, with high exposure, uh, big vulnerability, and socioeconomical impacts uh, for flash floods, flooding effects. My question is, uh, how can we uh, wait, for instance, reallocate people, that means uh, the affordability of having commerce uh, close to the river, but relocating people and the commerce, the, 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 the jobs, uh, uh, far away from the river, uh, was it, what is the, I say, the, the cross subsidy of losing the affordability of having commerce close to the river with the opportunity of creating more jobs for river restoration. So how can we balance that? Because it's in a, a very important point for the new, the next uh, uh, measures or something like that. Thank you. Uh, the, the suggestion of reallocate people is the people that live in the right margin of the river, not all the people of the neighborhood, of the, all the people of the basin, is the people that lives in the floodplain. <laughs> the people should not be here, <laughs> should be there. So the suggestion is not to move all the commerce and uh, extract all the commerce from there, because there is a tradition of the there is a tradition of uh, the commerce exists in in this area. We do do not want to break the tradition of the people because it's important too. So uh, the suggestion is just to restore the river uh, margin and reallocate the the stands that are in this area only. But, but when you are restoring the river, you are putting money for new jobs. Yeah. And and, and, and working the restoration. Yeah. So how can we balance the loss of work for affordability of commerce, losing work, losing jobs, with new jobs for mm -hmm. river restoration? We thought about it, uh, about to, to do like on chain, 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 because uh, the, they, they, we can create a park or places near the, the, the river, so people can still be there, um, but with some protection, because if we, we, we uh, protect the, the, the river and create uh, ways to to prevent the flood, so it won't be so so. Uh, so dangerous for for them to stay close the, the river. If we use like the example of Chen Chen. <laughs> <laughs> you really like to say that, Nick. Yes. <laughs> uh, I think there is something. Um, I've been to that area, um, and it's uh, yeah. It. Oh, I, I understand what uh, Carol is saying here, that it's, that is traditionally a marketplace. So it would be really, um, I don't think uh, people would want to move away from there. But those who are just right next to the channel, uh, they are uh, ha at very high risk. That is the area that there shouldn't be any habitation. At least in that, because we have seen in previous floods that that area has been flooded and all their business was um, destroyed. So the recommendation would be to move those guys only 
to the maybe the main market or to make place for them that way they will not lose their commerce they will not lose their profit the location that is very prime for them and for business location is the prime thing is location so they will not lose the profit however uh, if they are relocated to the main market given more space there that will not hamper the structure of the area as well the business it's a central business district so obviously no one wants to hamper that uh, fine balance and that and by renovating the river the channel that will generate more jobs so that's actually a win win situation for the government for the uh, local mayor so may maybe they should <laughs> they should have been here in the workshop <laughs> okay uh, any more questions for group 2 yes consideration not a question <laughs> don't be mad at me <laughs> just to say that it's something that for, for I know of São Carlos and I know of the São Carlos downtown. Uh, there are some uh, some teachers that study that some areas, some commercial areas, don't need cars. Mm -hmm. We could take off the cars of some commercial areas, and this goes exactly to the way of the train chain. <laughs> that idea would go exactly with this way. You have only people there, not cars. You you yes, you decrease the impermeabilization of the streets and everything. But just to add, sorry. That's, that's, that's actually uh, happening in many many uh, city centers in Europe. I mean, in Chester city center, well, they, they have introduced buses now, but there are strict areas where no cars are allowed. And that's the middle of the city center where most of the shops are. So there are only people uh, walking around, but then cars are restricted. So that helps in p pollution control and things like that. Also restricts the amount of people that go in. People are walking within, but there are car Cars are a bit further away, so that helps in keeping the cultural vibe of the city center as well. So yeah, that's a very good recommendation, I think. Yeah, thank you very much. <laughs> very good presentation. So uh, yes, uh, now I would like to invite Team Three <laughs> and uh, to kindly come and present their presentation. So, hello everyone, my name is Bruno, and I'm, uh, we are group two, formed by me, three, sorry, <laughs> formed by me, Alexis, Yuri, Eric, André, Julia, and Tassiana. Uh, we have chosen the city uh, for this study case, the city of Aracaju, because me and Yuri lived in Aracaju, and then we have a background uh, because we have experienced some of this phenomena in Aracaju. And uh, Aracaju is a city located in uh, Sergipe, it's the capital of Sergipe, in the northeast of Brazil. It's a city with 181 kilo, uh, square kilometers. And we consider it as a large scale because, it's, uh, because of the amount of people with the area. It's a coastal zone. And the city of Aracaju, the drainage system of Aracaju is characterized by some uh, open channels, most of them. Some of them are closed, but most of them are open channels. And from the year of 19, from the decade of 1970s, we had a boom of uh, population growth. But the infrastructure of the city and of drainage and sanitation and everything didn't go didn't grow together with the the growth of the population and then we have uh, the occupation of elevated areas that is dangerous because of uh, slides uh, earth slides and we have also the occupation of mangrove areas uh, a part of the city was filled with soil from other areas and this part was uh, composed by sand and mangrove soil, most of it. Then we have here, just to explain, the, the occupation of the city happened in this area, most of the occupation from the 70s in this area, because this area we call the expansion zone. There is a very low occupation uh, in, in this area down here. The most, most of people live in this part of the city. Let's see. What else? 
then this problem of infrastructure uh, made that the city was enabled, the, the drainage system was enabled to put the water away. So we, uh, the system was not enough to put all the rainwater to the river, to, to take the, the rainwater to the river. Then we have a lot of fruit, floods and flash floods because it's very, very fast for the floods to happen. The channels, they go up very fast. And in addition, we have an aggravating problem that is we are a coastal uh, city and in the level of the sea is almost the same as the level of the channels because all of the channels, oh no, but most of the channels, they finish on river, Sajip River. That's the, the main river of the city. And then when the tide goes up, the channels goes up. Then when you have rain and tide, and a high tide, then it's certain that's going to happen a flood. Another bad thing that happens in Aracaju is that it's something related that, uh, to the population that uh, Yuri is going to talk a bit more about, is that there are a lot of illegal connections of sewers into the channels. Then people connect directly into the channels, they, they, they house sewers. And there is an interesting thing that the data that the government uh, is sent to, to IBGE yeah, is that 87.2% of the people has correct and good sanitation in the city, but that's not true. And no, I think that's it. I'm going to give to Yuri from now. So, uh, about the, the public perception, uh, with the, the growth of the urbanization uh, came a lot of fl uh, flood, floods and with a large frequency. But it's associated to a lack of public planning and it, it was a result of a settlement in risk areas. Uh, However, the locals do not uh, associate that to the, the problem in the drainage in the, in the city. Uh, and they don't, don't, they don't, they don't are uh, aware uh, about the, their participation in the process of decision making. Uh, and they just believe that the government uh, has to deal with it. But, uh, the, uh, we need to improve the strategies to involve the community uh, in the decision making. Well, uh, because we we do not have in the region a problem with the altitude, because uh, Aracaju is a city, a uh, little little no, a huge plan. Uh, we do not have a, a big slopes. Uh, and we can see in this map uh, the, the altitude uh, maintain the uh, low levels and it's not a problem but uh, we have a lot of people that uh, live in, in zones with uh, high risk and but they don't do not have the knowledge to award this and uh, to solve this the uh, the government uh, tried to make the uh, uh, reunions with the population uh, using this invitation to to uh, discuss with the community about all the problems that caused the uh, not only not only in drainage, but uh, also in, in the disponibility of water, uh, uh, problems about the sewage, and etc. Uh, but we can see that the reunions uh, was not so effective because we have we had uh, some areas, and for each area was made uh, what at least two uh, audience with the population. But uh, for each area, we just see this quantity of people. So we do not 
uh, can see the participation of the community and uh, we not, do not have a uh, effective voice of the population. And most of people that go to the audience uh, in general goes to go to uh, complain, just uh, do not, yes, yeah, the specific problems, just problems related to uh, their own people, not for the neighbors. And about the socioeconomic vulnerabilities difference, uh, we can see that the this is a map that shows the the occurrence of uh, floods in the the Aracaju. and we can see that the flood occurs and uh, uh, basically in every city uh, we have a lot of points, and we uh, this uh, those points. Uh, are close to the open channels because uh, Bruno has uh, explained about this. The channels has a problem associated to the river, and the river is associated to the sea. Uh, but we can, at least me, I I saw in the city that the rich population, uh, the impacts in the rich population are different to the impacts in the poor population. The rich population transiting the city with uh, their cars, uh, they do not have the direct contact with the, the water and the flood, but the poor population uh, uh, has to walk in, in streets in the flu, uh, put, putting in risk their health and etc. Uh, we bring some pictures of the occurrence of floods. Uh, in this case, due to uh, the trash, uh, it's a channel, an, an open channel. We can see that in the street, in the road, we don't do not have water, so it wasn't raining. But we can see that the channel is almost in the uh, full level. The high level. It's the influence of the river and also the sewage. It's a channel in the same situation. We do not we do not, we do not have rain, but we have the the section of the channel almost full. This is a region, one of the most rich regions of the city. And uh, despite of being the uh, poor, a uh, rich region, they also have uh, this problem. But how I said, the impact is not so uh, imminent like in the poor, poor population because they transit with the cars, uh, do not have the direct contact with the water. This is the same place of the previous picture. And you have a video, I don't know if the, we have time. It's an interview in the local local TV. About the Mais problem. um dia de transtorno para os moradores do bairro 13 de Julho, na zona sul da capital. De julho com a is maré a... mais alta do ano, eles sofreram com os alagamentos. A rich region of the city. Quatro da tarde desta quinta-feira, a maré de 2.4 já causava transtornos no bairro 13 de Julho, na avenida yes. Grisio Cruz. Um trecho ficou <laughs> totalmente alagado e o trânsito precisou ser desviado. Agentes da SMTT orientavam os motoristas. Algumas ruas da região ficaram intransitáveis. O pior ponto de alagamento aqui na área foi justamente aqui na Praça da Imprensa, na 13 de julho. Dá só uma olhada como ficou essa rua totalmente alagada. Muita gente ficou ilhado. Só alguns motoristas arriscavam passar pelo trecho que mais parecia um rio. Nesta farmácia, os funcionários ficaram ilhados. Do outro lado da rua, este cliente não conseguiu chegar à farmácia. Is, uh, Tentando chegar à farmácia, mas apareceu o rio de repente aqui. Was trying to get the drug story, but he couldn't do it because difícil, of the difícil, difícil. E o cheiro agradável, né? The street was muito agradável esse cheiro. Muito yes, forte, the street was forte, forte, esgoto puro. E como é que faz agora? <laughs> Vários estabelecimentos na área ficaram sem funcionar no yes. final da tarde. Segundo este gerente. Difícil trabalhar com os transtornos que são gerados pelo problema. Entra ano, sai ano, 
e ninguém toma providências. Hoje eles botaram, o SMTT botou aí os guardas para eliminar os veículos, que todo ano acontece isso, nunca fizeram isso. Isso é super importante que eles fizeram a medida que eles tomaram as providências hoje. Para que acabe com esse negócio, mas não tem que andar de barco aqui. Com o um alerta da Marinha sobre a maior maré prevista para esta quinta-feira, a Prefeitura intensificou esta semana o serviço de limpeza do canal da Avenida Anísio Azevedo. Nós alargamos o canal, aprofundamos o canal, the... a saída aqui para de... acesso para tanto para o Rio Puxi civil, como civil para o Rio Sergipe, Sergipe né? numa tentativa de minimizar a situação so, diante da, da yeah, altura das mulheres. Uh, a empresa municipal de obras ainda channel, não possui um projeto para resolver o problema dos canais e costumam transbordar com a alta das marés. Mas técnicos do órgão estudam alternativas. Em Santos, por exemplo, a oscilação da maré é muito maior do que aqui em Aracaju. Eles têm um sistema que se chama de comportas. Como é que funciona? Quer dizer, quando a maré está vazando, a comporta está aberta, então a água está fluindo normalmente. Quando a maré está subindo, a comporta fecha, de maneira que impeça que a So, I pass my the floor for Julian. All right, we try to think about some proposals based on the scope of this workshop. So, we thought about developing a, a system alert, uh, but not so sophisticated one, so that the poorer people are able to use. Um, Some not not very sophisticated, but a simple alert system so that people have time to escape or try to find some shelter and so on. And not only for this case study, but I think in Brazil in general, we need to rethink our basic management system. We need to rethink how we plan our basins, especially urban ones. And especially because I found very interesting that one of the presenters said that we usually think about when some kind of disaster may happen, but we need to start thinking about if it occurs. <clears throat> we also think that population needs to get more access to information, uh, usually in Brazil, All the knowledge we provide stays in the um, academic field, so that we need to think about some strategies to spread our knowledge, the technologies we develop in, here in the university. Um, we also need to increase or spread our environmental education, especially in school, like elementary school, because especially children, they have like much more influence on their parents than us. So I think that's the basis. We need to re-educate our children to the environmental issues we face nowadays. <coughs> yes, especially to make people aware of the consequences of these disasters, because uh, most, most people just think in the economical issues, not only on like, especially because Brazilians especially need to be related to the local, the, the area they live in, because most of the people think that these problems are related to the government and, and not to us. So we need to be aware that this problem may like, affect our health, decrease our economic resources, and this costs money. We also need to be more cooperative, like make cooperations between academy and society, private institutions. Um, I think Brazil is like a little bit late in this running. Europe and United States like much more ahead in this kind of partnership. Environmental education, I already speak about that. And you need to I think especially CAPS is trying to do this nowadays, but we need to put more pressure on this. Um, interdisciplinarity, when we educate our students, especially in 
graduate and postgraduate courses because sometimes we just specialize in just one field, but we need to have like a, a wide perspective about our societies. Thank you so much for your attention. Questions? Just uh, a comment before we start. We, we saw in the other two groups the sponge cities with the Korean example and the other example with the low impact development as well. We thought about that. However, in Aracaju, the water table is too high mm. to use those techniques. Then it wouldn't work that well. It could improve a little bit, but it wouldn't work that well. Is that Very good presentation. Uh, so, any questions? Yes? Ah, me too. <laughs> Okay, so uh, you said that uh, you have a lack of participation from from community, right? And why do you think it happens? Because, as you said, people are affected by these events, so they should be aware about that. And why do you, you that you are from from the city, why do you think it happens? I mean, do you think they don't know that these events happen? I mean, the meetings with uh, local authorities? I don't know. Because if people are the most affected by those events, they should be there, right? So something's ha something is going wrong. Do you agree? Yes. And what do you think should be done? So I think that we don't we do not have uh, a good education, a good environment, environmental education. So we do not associate that problems to a uh, problem in our, our society, a problem that we can help to do. We just want to, uh, how can I say? Uh, we just think, oh, if it's, it's, it's a problem in the drainage, so the, govern the government had to do it and I do not have to do anything. I think that the most of the population think this way, but uh, really, I, f I really agree with you that uh, the citizens could have more participation. And not just complaining, but also uh, with contribution, with uh, a good idea uh, that could improve not only the own space, but the neighbor's space. Uh, uh, in my perception, by living in the city, I realized that I think people, they got used to the situation. I lived there 10 years and I heard the same story, 10 years, the same story. No, that avenue is going to, to the water is going up in that avenue, don't go there. They got used, it's like normal for their life. I don't know how to change that, but it is normal for them. You, you know that uh, in a few weeks we have the visit of Professor Gunther Bloch and he's the responsible for the unsolved the problems in hydrology. And this is one of the biggest problems. Um, why people still live in these places that they know is going to be flooded, but they are still there. So it's an invitation for you to come to the next workshop in a few weeks. Okay. <laughs> I'm going for the, the invitation, perhaps because we are trying to prepare a, a concept paper to be submitted to, to international journals. And perhaps we have time because uh, Gunther Blush is coming here, arriving on 23rd April and leaving on 27th April. So it's a short time. But if we are going to share our findings, perhaps for this workshop, why not to, uh, to provide with some case studies? Why not the three case studies discussed here uh, the, in, in Sao Paulo in, two, two, in, in a medium-sized city like Sao Carlos uh, or in a big mega city like uh, uh, Sao Paulo and also in Aracaju. This is uh, uh, a very, very interesting uh, um, examples of socio-hydrological patterns. Uh, so very fit. Uh, uh, my question is related to the the older the elderly people because they have they had more time living with this 
problems in the last decades. I remember in Aracaju, Sedu Peixe. You, do, you, do you know who is Sedu Peixe? Yes, I know. Sedu Peixe is a man, an old man. I don't know if he's still living, about 80s or 90s. Right? No, no, he's not. He's anymore. not living yes, anymore. No. Okay. <laughs> and he, in, in former times, he was the leader uh, uh, swimming in, in the bay, uh, in the entrance of the coast to, 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 to the main rivers, guiding the, the ships because it's too many banks of, 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 uh, uh, of sediments in the entrance. They have nothing to do where is the bank. So only one man swimming, guiding the ships, sedupesh. Sedupesh means in English, uh, uh, John of the fish. Uh, and he spent all he, he, his life doing so, doing this business, only guiding ships, not to be uh, attracting on the sand dust or on the sand dunes behind your, your, your ships. Uh, because it's, it's a, a very small depth in, in, the, in the entrance, you know. So that's the reason why perhaps we need to make a link with the social memory. And the elderly people has this memory because they had how in older times they face it. They did face with these impacts. Uh, uh, when you say, okay, ah, in 20 years, nothing w happened. It's this, the same situation that for me is say, okay, the new generation, perhaps we, we younger, uh, <laughs> didn't uh, uh, learn uh, the good lesson how to, to, to deal with this stuff, this uh, uh, rest of debris or even the sewage system uh, not working. So the question is, why not asking the, the, old, the, old, the, the elderly, elderly people? Uh, of course, they have some limits in this question, but wh why, uh, what are the learning of facing the same problem in the, the, the last decade? So, my question is, social memory, re rebound effects, eh? or rebound uh, uh, factors, and social hydrology. So try to make a link or something like that. Because yeah, I think it's a very good idea. And it is a, a way as well to understand how it changed. Because we don't know what made uh, it, it come to that point. Uh, because I saw today a picture of 50 or maybe 40 years ago with the same situation. But uh, we could m maybe study the series of events with this social information from elderly people and then see what happened in the middle. Maybe, I don't know, five years that that didn't happen. What, what happened in that years? What was different? What was different in the precipitation? Some things like that. I think we can have some informations like that. Just making a link. Uh, uh, Son talked, um, please so just return, about interdisciplinarity and that we just uh, talking the, this two day in the workshop, we saw uh, very guys talking about flood and how to resolve this problem about their perspectives. And that's what we're doing now. And maybe with the information of the elder people, um, the very different point of views, maybe we can uh, going further. Yeah, I think uh, you have uh, uh, already answered my question. So we have time for one last question. It's uh, not a question, it's a comment yeah. like you, you did before. I think the problem <laughs> of Aracaju <laughs> is okay. similar to Berlin because the city level is, is at the, the sea level. And we have lots of uh, garbage on, on those channels. And the, the only way to 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 improve is to clean the channel like like the the, the government was, were 
we're trying to 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 do. So uh, the for for this situation, I think the best is uh, environmental education. Because in Berlin, we saw a fridge inside the the, the channel. <laughs> Uh, uh, couch, beds, yeah. all of the inside the channel, yes. It's, it's sad. Yeah. Well, thank you very much. Uh, I think uh, we will wrap up here and then uh, excellent presentation. And we are just uh, working on the um, scores. And then we will uh, invite the winner group, winning group, to come uh, forward and get their prize, as promised. So just give us a moment. Uh, well, uh, thank you very much for all the three presentations. They were really, really good. And you made our job very, very difficult, really. Uh, it was so close, um, but uh, well. Since there is only one prize, we need to find someone, one group. So unanimously, we have decided, uh, based on the content, uh, visibility, uh, based on the focus of workshop, the way the presentations has been delivered, how it has been analyzed, what recommendations have been presented, and how question and answer session has been approached. So based on all that, the highest score goes to <laughs> Thank you for that. Uh, <laughs> group three. <laughs> Professor? Uh, Professor Mario? Would you like to come here and present the gift to them, please? <laughs> so, for me? no, not for you. <laughs> A representative of group three, or if you all want to come here. <laughs> okay. You're welcome. Photos, photos. <laughs> photos, there's a photo. Photo, okay, like this. There are 23, well, 33. <laughs> <laughs> Which one of them does apply? Okay, step forward. Yes. Okay. No, no, Thank you. <laughs> uh, we have uh, something little more for someone very special here uh, who has helped me throughout the workshop uh, from the first day I have come here till now. So this is a personal, very small gift for me to Felipe. <laughs> So, it's a little something which says, rise and shine. Okay. <laughs> Thank, Thank you. you. You're welcome. <laughs> right, so I know you don't drink much, but... <laughs> um, yes, so thank you so much for coming here and being a part of this, uh, this workshop. It was really nice. I hope you have learned something new. And it was, the workshop was able to give you some new perspective. And hopefully, we will be able to collaborate in future, uh, exchange some knowledge, because I would like to learn something new from you all. And I think it goes both ways. So thank you so much. And Professor, would you like to say something? Uh, we are very proud to, that Namrata through FAPESPI United Kingdom Academy project uh, organized it uh, masterly, uh, superbly, 
this this uh, this workshop was uh, very beyond the the initial objectives yeah. and the goals of the projects, and of course we are very open until of this Friday because we are going to work harder in terms of renew this partnership with University of Chester through NAMRATA and the co-workers also, so it is very open to all of you. Yeah. Of course, also in terms of uh, some other uh, opportunities, uh, exchange, student exchange, new projects or so. So we are really uh, very proud to uh, hosting this workshop in, in terms of social hydrology, social memory, and water security. So. We hope you enjoy it very much. And of course, please, uh, we, uh, uh, we are going to share with you some letter of check on checklist of uh, uh, the assessment of the cars. So please, feedback us about that uh, in terms of how can we ameliorate the, the, the next, the forthcoming uh, workshops. The, the two ones in, in, in late April with Gunther Blush of TU Vienna, Austria and with uh, Nick Hankins University of Oxford and uh, United Kingdom. So two big scholars also coming here, share their knowledge, their knowledge and also learn more with us. So thank you for coming. Uh, be in touch. Please take li likes in the, in the Twitter and also in the Facebook. And please invite more people into the round. So thank you very much and congratulate all of you. Okay. And also uh, uh, for these guys, uh, Junior and Marcelo Tadeo, and the Setiski people, staff, uh, that was, uh, uh, were very, very uh, enjoyable people. The, the facility of the lab is, is absolutely brilliant. Of course, uh, nothing to do uh, with this success, with this, uh, be only beyond or only through this facility. So that's the, the, the success. Uh, depends of this facility also. So thank you, Junior. Thank you, uh, Tadeo, Marcelo, Marcelo Tadeo, and also the Setiski staff. Thank you to all of you. Thank you.